computer. <laughs> okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining tonight or this afternoon or this morning or wherever you find yourself. And um, yeah, let's take it very easy. So sit back and relax. It's not that I'm going to tell you anything that you don't know. Um, um, yeah, this is, and, and the thing that comes to me is like, this is still the same moment. You know, there's still the same moment. The past is gone. The future is not there. And here you find yourself in your, in yourself. So that's where we're going to deeply connect with, with yourself. It's all happening in you. I'm, like I said, I'm just voicing the words that you basically told me to tell you as a reminder or as, as a like refreshing yourself in this and make it making a deep connection with your soul with your spirit with you with you in your core being and um, that's that's very well possible because a part of your mind is in communication with with all of that and, and, and different parts is a little distracted but um, even that we include in, we include that in our practice. You know, it's like not that we say like, okay, well these thoughts, okay, I, I don't want those anymore. No, it's like you will have to include them in and let them be. Not that you have to do anything with them, but that you just let them be. And in that way, they will go a little bit more to the back of your mind instead of being right in front of your face. So this is an opportunity to, to really make a big shift inside yourself. And um, hi Shirley, welcome to. Um, so uh, it is like the, this is the opportunity to, to really make a deep contact with yourself. That's the most important thing. Um, so that's where it's happening. That's where we dive deeper and deeper in. And uh, today we're going to do that uh, using a couple of, yeah, almost like scripture, the scripture of, uh, of Joel in the parenthesis of it, in eternity. Um, the part that, that we're going to use is uh, release God release God and I thought it was such a great idea to release God you know it's like all releasing all the ideas that we have about God we don't need any of those ideas so in that sense we're always coming back to to the same point like I said nothing happened this is still the same moment here you are you find yourself as a, as a beginner this is a beginner's class it's not like that we are so far in our process or so far here and there. No, this is the place where we come with a completely open mind and open arms and hands to receive. And that's the only way that something can come into you and you can feel that, like the energy already shifts when you let go of your past, when you're not doing anything with the thoughts that you have. But just let them be. So that is very simple. It is like, yes, you can relax in them. They are allowed to be there. You don't have to fight your thoughts or you don't have to fight ideas that you have. You just don't give them any energy. Just let them be. And so before you know, you sink a little deeper inside yourself and glitch through the thoughts that you have into a deeper place inside yourself and this place can you you can already feel that stillness of it it becomes really quiet like the, this there's no no real um say temptation to to be distracted you come into a place of, of stillness and then the the thoughts are still there they just woo, 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 go upside and you're not not doing anything with them but coming deeper into this moment. See, this is still the same moment. It is, it is the moment to release God, to release everything that you think, every idea that you have. Now you, you can sink deeper inside yourself by doing so. 
you don't need any of your ideas. You don't need to know, like you don't need to know phrases from Joel or you don't need to know phrases from the Bible to get here. No, it's you becoming completely quiet and not doing anything so that you're open to receive. And that that is too simple for you because you think that you have to do something for it. You think that you have to study hard and be rigid in your meditation scheme or whatever. You, you or you're occupied with your own process. All these things you don't have to do. So release that in this moment, just just for now, just as an experiment. Let them go. Let those ideas go. Because. When you do so, something else can occur, and that can only happen by your decision. And um, I will start reading from a parenthesis, and then that's chapter 2, um, Release God. And, and Joe was telling us about, you know, this is not for, for everyone in a certain sense. Not, this is, no, this is not for everyone. This is, what, this is for you. You are the one... That, uh, that is listening to this. You are the one that's being called to, to listen to these. These words are exactly right for you. So when I'm reading them, just take them as those, those were written for you. Like this is the time that you heard it by your decision because you want it. You want nothing else but really, really coming into contact with yourself and the present that is given by um, the, the parts that I will be reading. So here we go, um, see if I can find it on my little machine here. Um, so one of the, in chapter two, Joel says, only the very courageous can embark on the spiritual journey and only those of great strength and vision can hope to continue on this path. Nearly 20 centuries ago, the master made it clear that the, path, the way is straight and narrow, and few there will be that enter there. That this is true is borne out by the fact that up to the present time, very few have been able to remain on the spiritual path and continue to go forward. It is not easy to surmount superstition, ignorance and fear. And um, despite prejudice and previous failures to set forth in search of new horizons. See, but it's still, is, is the invitation that's laying right in front of you. Like this is, this is your time. This, this is the time to really get get started with it or really go for it. You know, it's like the it is it is a narrow path, okay. And then but you're on it. So you you already chose to do that. And then um, the help is there, but also yeah. It is a contradiction because I just said like you don't have to do anything for it, but at the same time you have to want it. Otherwise, you will be distracted by something else. And what does it mean that you want it? And we can take a look at that. Because it will mean that you let go of your thoughts, that you uh, release God and release the ideas that you hold as, as if they were your own. And let yourself be filled with new ideas of love and extension. And love and light and extension and forgiveness so you're going to do a couple of like uncomfortable things in on this path that you're not supposed to do as a human being like being completely honest with yourself about what you're actually thinking and what you actually hold as ideas that you treasure and that you have to be so honest with yourself but how can you discover um, what that is you know that you be honest with yourself I'm gonna I'm gonna use a little bit from A Course in Miracles too to combine that because uh, you will see in a moment that that they are very easily to um, to put together in a sense like they can help each other out in in 
discovering for yourself what it actually means to be honest with yourself. So the part that I'm reading from A Course in Miracles is from chapter 21, Reason and Perception. And um, it says there's a responsibility for sight, for vision. And it's a responsibility prayer or words, whatever you want to call this. So when it says, I am responsible for what I see, I choose the feelings I experience and I decide upon the goal I would achieve. And everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. I am responsible for what I see. I choose the feelings I experience and I decide the goal I would achieve. And everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. So that puts the responsibility in your lap and that's why I'm reading it too. So what I wanted to say is like the, the, the fact that you can be very, that you have to be very honest with yourself is basically that you use these words like the responsibility of what you are experiencing even as feelings or as as circumstances or all of that it's like this is what i've been asking for you know the re the result is there. like this is exactly what i've been asking for the situation that i find myself in um you name it, all, all the details that come with that, the feelings that I experience, all of that is, is just a choice of you. So that's the same with, with the choice for a path, you know? It's like the, the possibility that you can literally choose. You've chosen, you have been chosen for this path, you're on it and you get the results of your own decisions. Like for instance, what goal are you choosing for yourself right now? What is your heart's desire? And here, and here um, Joel says something really nice in chapter two by releasing God. I'll, I'll find that for you. Because the basic, the basic idea behind releasing God is freedom. And uh, I'll see if I can find it because that would be great to, to and I'll throw that in too, so to speak. Okay, here we go. Freedom. Oh yeah, yeah. the only thing essential to freedom. Here you go. The only thing essential to freedom is the desire to be free. That's all. Like there's nothing else. The only thing essential to freedom is the desire to be free. Because the des with the desire to be free, the means towards bringing, them, bringing it about reveals themselves. The only thing essential to freedom is the desire to be free, nothing else. Because with the desire to be free, the means toward bringing it about, reveal themselves. So this is probably too simple for you, but it is, it is the truth. And this is what I'm saying with, with a goal, you know, you set yourself a goal because um, you decide upon the goals that you want to achieve. So if that goal is, is, is uh, freedom, then you will have to have a desire for this freedom and wanting that above all else. You know, in this, so now we're, we're back to the uh, responsibility prayer and what I read before, releasing God, releasing yourself from ideas that are limiting you or ideas that are simply not true, but you hold on to them. So this is where you have to be very honest with yourself. What is my goal? What am I choosing? What What is it? What outcome do I want? Do I want to be free? If that is my desire, it is accomplished in a moment. You know, if I discover, well, that is my goal, but I don't see it in my uh, daily life or in my experience of myself, 
I feel completely restricted, then you're probably still confused about the goal that you're setting yourself. You know, so it's like Joe says it here very clear. You set the goal, you have this heart's desire of freedom and the means that are going to be given you will lead this, um, will bring this to you, literally will be given to you. So that makes it, you know, like it is too simple, but this is basically the main, the main axle which the wheel is spinning around. You know, it's like you, you will have to have this as your, your goal. You want to experience freedom and this is going to be given me because it's my heart's desire. And so I want to experience that above all else. Yeah, I want to experience my the freedom that is the real freedom. And and how will that be brought about? Well, that is the path that we're on. You know, it's like even though there's no timeline and no real, you know, process in a certain sense, no, it's it's like the goal that you set is still going to be um, the accomplishment of it at the same time. You mean it once and you experience it. But up to that time, you, you will have to release old ideas of failure, old ideas of, of different goals that you have and let them go for a moment just to come into yourself, into this deep place inside yourself where you, where you really want to experience the freedom that is you with no distraction and with no, um, yeah, no alternative. Like that becomes the purity in which you experience yourself. So yes, I, I went really fast through this idea of the responsibility prey, but it's like you, you got the main thing out of it that I'm connecting with what Joel says, and that is you choose the goals that you want to achieve. And just using this part of that responsibility prayer, you get the result of your own mind, you get the results of your own decisions. And you will have to accept those. Like you can fight them, but you still have to accept, okay, this is where I find myself. This is what I want no longer, but it's still there and I will I will I will take them too. You know, and it's not that I'm rejecting my own feelings or my own um struggling or whatever. I'm not rejecting that at the same time. I'm taking responsibility for them and bringing it back to myself. It's like, okay, I gotta make, I gotta discover what it is, why I'm not choosing for my, my total freedom. Why I'm still distracted or tempted by something else that seems to be more worth fighting for or more worth focusing on. So this is what I mean with, uh, with being really honest with yourself. So I'll read some more from what Joel said about freedom. It's not really about freedom, but it's, it's more like he brings you right into it. Freedom comes only when we can break through the limitations of our mind when we do not try to pin everything down to a meaning or to confine every statement to meaning the same thing always. Sorry, I have to read that again because I don't get it this way. When we do not try to pin everything down to a meaning or confine every statement to meaning the same thing always, words sometimes seem to be contradictory but that is because they mean one thing today and something different tomorrow, when they are used in different ways. The real things of life cannot be restricted. Freedom will not limit itself to a word. It is like joy, it is like peace. We know what they are, but we cannot describe or explain them because they cannot be confined to a word or a phrase. How can anyone explain what the psalmist meant by the secret place of the Most High? 
What is that? Where is it? Is it a place? Is it up high somewhere? Can the pl secret place of the Most High be located in space and time? Okay, then he's, he goes further and, and I, I'm just loving it because it is like, yeah, this is exactly what I would love to share. So that's why I'm reading them. And as <clears throat> we are instructed to open our consciousness, how do we open our consciousness? What does it look like open? And what does it look like closed? When we speak of going within, closing the door and entering the sanctuary to pray, where is that sanctuary? It is in our home? It is in our church? Is it anywhere except in consciousness? So those are just words. And if we try to break them down into meaning, we lose them. We might say, we might say that they are poetry. They are, but we are, they are, but we are never going to find the kingdom of God without poetry. So I don't want to get into that idea about the poetry, but see the, the idea of um, that we are being instructed to open our consciousness is, is obvious. And how do we do that? Like I said, like we open ourselves up by being really honest with ourselves by sitting back and relaxing, by, by checking out the outer edges of our consciousness, where you are really going in deeply inside yourself and be really like in full expectancy, not, not looking for anything particular, but being, being thrilled to, to discover, you know. But that's not really something that you do, but you get excited when you feel that you're sinking through your thoughts, like I just said, like in the beginning said, like you, you glitch through your thoughts into a deeper layer of yourself, into stillness. And that doesn't stop there, so you can still sink deeper inside yourself. But the fact that, you're, that you release your thoughts and not do anything with them is already like a a release like oh my god ah that's that's nice and quiet like that feels a lot better instead of being occupied with the thoughts that you have so then you sink deeper inside your stillness and then still open yourself up more and more by deeper and deeper relaxing and by allowing it, every change to occur, but being very alert in a certain sense, like being very alert about what is going on, what is happening. See, and when I say that, you, you automatically start to do it. And you recognize this because you, you are familiar with this. You know this. It's, it's nothing new. It's just that I put it together. As, as it's being put together for us. So freedom is a choice. It is a, your desire for it will, will make it happen. So, but then <clears throat> at the same time, you have to be honest with yourself in terms of if there is something else that I want, I get a result of that too. Like it, it will show itself, you will, it will manifest itself if I'm not, say, not pure in my, in my goal. So, yeah, it takes a little bit of, of exercise and, and discovery. And, and it's not that you have to dissect yourself, but you have to... And you have to do something with outcomes that you don't want, so you, that you see like, oh my God, why did this happen again? Or I'm, I seem to be in a loop. How, however, can I come out of this? You will have to look at the obstacles that you're putting there because you are responsible. It sounds really terrible when you're in the midst of it and you can't get out of it, but you are responsible for what you see. And you will have to accept the outcome that you are experiencing. There's just no other way about it. 
So luckily, this is all being brought about, say, by grace, by, by the light. So you are on this path and this is being done for you. That's another, par another paradox. But you will have to be clear in your intentions. This is what you want. You want to experience freedom. You want the, not what you think freedom is, but what freedom really is. To release God, to release yourself, to, to come in deep contact with yourself and communicate as that and nothing else. Okay, I'm going to bring Joel back in. The spirit or the consciousness of man cannot be restricted. We cannot confine God. We cannot understand, analyze or dissect God. We cannot even name God. God eludes us when we try to put God into the letters G-O-D. The soul of man is free. The spirit of man is free and the consciousness of man is free. That is why we cannot put God into a religion. We cannot put Christ into a religion. And we cannot put religion into man. We cannot confine, restrict or limit God, Christ or religion. These are free and if we ever try to contain them within a form, we lose them. So the part of your mind that's in constant communication is the bridge to God. So that's also inside of you and that's your Holy Spirit. So that's where, where you can use your Holy Spirit all the time in terms of you can ask what to do, what to say, where to go. And what is, what is what I'm supposed to do today? What can bring me, I want to experience real freedom. Show me what that is. Like you, it's in the not knowing that it's going to be given and not in you thinking that you know something. So it's like being deaf, dumb and blind. You, you're being guided with this. And this is also what I meant, like this is being done for you. Like you gotta have your intentions uh, straight. Like you gotta you have your focus right. But at the same time, this is being done for you. So you can ask everything that you need. You can, you can um, start your day like that, you know? Like, what am I supposed to do today? What, am I su what will, would be a really nice way to hang out today? What will bring me in, uh, incredible joy? What is that anyway? So, and see the... Uh, Joel said too in this, uh, what I just read, it's like the, you know, the consciousness of man is free. Like everything, and that, that brings back to the responsibility prayer too, it's like everything that you choose will be given. That's literally what you choose, what you want, even the distractions that you want are going to be given freely because that's the nature of the universe. You know, it's like there's no... That is your free will. You can get whatever you want in that sense. You ask for it. So you get you get a confirmation of that in every instant. And you you probably say, or you might say, like, mm, I really don't want that. I don't think I asked for that. And then it's like, no, 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 you did ask for it. Otherwise you wouldn't, wouldn't receive, yeah, it wouldn't be in front of your nose. So the, the consciousness of man is free and, uh, and uh, you use the power of God for everything, also for the, th the things that have no reality, but still you're using it 
Like you, you are free to create. Look at what we create. Look at all that we manifest in this world. It has no reality, but we manifest it anyway. You know, it's like there's no, no limit to it. Everyone can do whatever they want. And they realize it all the time. We manifest and, and crystallize all kinds of ideas all the time. So this is the freedom of your consciousness. This is the freely given, like God freely gives to his son. And you can, but if you, if you want to, to um, discover what freedom is, that will have to be your focus. Yeah. So if you wish something else, you can experience the freedom of that choice, but that's not your true nature. That's not your true freedom. It's just a freedom of choice to do whatever you want. But you will have to accept the, uh, the consequences of it too. Like there, there is something connected to it. If you believe in your own ideas and you want to make those true, then you get the result of that too. So then in the end, the question is like, are you, are you sick and tired of your own ideas? Do you finally want to release God? from your ideas and wait till God gives you his ideas, like in you, of course, it's like there's no God outside of you, but there's a God and that is you. Or are you still on your little detour where you, where you are experimenting with the idea, how would it be to be separate from God? So all these ideas, all these choices that you make, all big consequences. So in that sense, you have to be very honest with yourself. It's like, what am I doing? What is going on in my life? What am I doing? Boy, I need help or I don't, I don't want it any longer. This is too painful. This is, this is so painful to, to lose the ones that I love or this is so painful. This is another disaster that happens in my life or this, yeah whatever you fill it in you know that you know the examples from your own experience so did you see enough pain in your brother did you see enough pain in whatever is going on so this is where the path becomes very narrow because you you will have to let go of these ideas too that you hold and that you have been discovering and experimenting with. So are you at the end of your own ideas and do you want to release God in this moment? This is this is your healing moment. Do you want to release that? Do you want to expand your consciousness? And do you want to receive the love of God and be the love of God? And, and let go, letting go of your own ideas. Are you done playing with your own ideas? So then there is a new freedom that comes to you. Completely new, still freedom. It's very still. It's not sensational, but it's, it's incredible. And it has nothing to do with your ideas about it. It only has to do with this moment. This moment is going to be free, completely free, not bound by fear or you know, by guilt or whatever. No, this is a completely new moment and you can be born in it. So why not today? Thank you.